Aha, let's look at the endocrine system today. Now, when you think of the endocrine system, you always want to think of hormones. That's what it's all about. And this is one of the two major controlling systems of the body. You've probably already seen the 11 body systems covered briefly in a previous chapter in an anatomy class. But of those 11, remember the nervous and endocrine system are the two big controlling systems. So let's look at the endocrine system. This picture right here just shows the major endocrine glands of the body. And we'll look at those superior and inferior here, just very briefly about what they do. In future videos, we'll look at each one in more detail. We start with the pineal gland, the hypothalamus, and the pituitary gland. You can see that those are all in the brain. They are part of the nervous system also. Some of these structures in this system overlap into other systems, and these three do here. That pineal gland secretes a hormone you may have heard of called melatonin. That has a lot to do with influencing your sleep and wake cycles. We'll see more on it in a future video. The hypothalamus has control over the pituitary gland. We'll see that that pituitary actually has two separate halves, and the hypothalamus connects to it and controls it through two separate structures. We'll see that further along. The pituitary itself secretes more hormones than any other structure in this system. There's 11 major hormones from the pituitary we'll look at in the future. Inferior, it is the thyroid gland. Located on its surface are also the parathyroids, which you can't see in this picture, but they are there. And that thyroid gland has a lot to do with your metabolism. Think about your energy levels when you think about metabolism. And the thyroid and parathyroids will work together to balance your blood calcium homeostasis. You better keep enough calcium in your blood and body, you'll have trouble with many things. The thymus gland is actually a very big part of the lymphatic system a lot to do with fighting disease, but it does put out a hormone that has to do with the maturing of the lymphatic system, so it's significant. The pancreas you probably heard of before, and one of its hormones called insulin has a big effect on our blood sugar levels. It's actually insulin and glucagon from the pancreas, which influence those blood sugar levels. We'll look at those some more in future videos. Sitting right on top of your kidneys are the adrenal glands, one half the adrenal medulla, is sympathetic nervous system and releases epinephrine and norepinephrine. Remember that prepares the body for physical activity. There's another half called the adrenal cortex has its own hormones. We'll look at those in the future. The kidneys aren't really part of this system, but they do put out an important hormone called erythropoietin that has to do with the production of red blood cells at the bone marrow. We'll see more on that in the future video. And then with the two genders, there's the ovaries and the testes. Testes, of course, puts out testosterone, ovaries, estrogen, and progesterone. So there's just a little brief overview of them. And here's a little section, just a little typed up few pictures that talks about what we just went over there. Same theory. A few things you want to know. What is the definition of a hormone? By definition, a hormone is a chemical signal that enters the blood, has to go into the blood, and travel some distance to a target tissue. Could be one specific thing, could be many. We'll see why that is in the future. What are the three things you want to always know about each hormone? Where is it made, number one? That's its production site. Where does it work? Number two, that's its target tissue. And number three, what are the effects? What does it do once it gets there? We're going to go over all that in detail in future videos. What is the target tissue? Just where in the body it works. Some hormones are very broad and work on many different things in the body. Some are very specific in just one location. A ligand is another term you'll hear mentioned in this chapter. Ligand is just a more general term for chemical signals. There are many different groups of them, which we'll see soon enough. But hormones is the one group we're specifically looking at in this system right here. So when you talk about hormones, think chemical signals. They're going into the blood. They travel around the body and they do many things. Opening and closing on channels are just one of the big things you've seen them do before and just may not have realized what it was. When you think about drugs, if you ever take pharmacology and look at drugs that affect how we work, most all of them are just mimicking or blocking chemicals you already have in you. If you understand how these major chemicals work, you can understand how a lot of pharmaceutical drugs work also. So here's all these glands we mentioned. We're going to look at those in more detail down the line. We're going to do short videos over each one of these. We'll get more detail further along. And our students often ask, how does a hormone know where to work in the body? Once a hormone goes into the blood, well, it pretty much goes everywhere. But that doesn't mean it'll work everywhere. 
they're going to interact with specific proteins, sort of like a key does with a lock. Everybody knows one key goes with one lock. Well, if only one cell type in the body has that lock, it's the only place that hormone will work. If many cell types in the body have it, it'll work in many different places. We're going to see examples of all that in the future as we go over these major hormones. So since all cells don't exhibit the same protein, the hormones won't all work in just the same place. They work in many, maybe just one. We'll see more of that in the future. So there's your little introduction on these major glands and some of the hormones that they produce. You want to read more about this? I have books available on Amazon. The links are here, or you can just search out the keywords. I'm going to give you a lot more information from these books. But when you order one, notice how there are two of them, right? There's part one and part two. Make sure you look for the body system that you're looking for. These are made for a two part 200 le college level anatomy classes. So make sure you look at the body systems that they cover before you order one. That way you get the right one. They're available on Amazon.